confusion. See these two? Memorize their faces. Now run along and play. See, Joe, the, the whiskey train works, the soda train works, but I can't get any ice, Joe. What do I do, huh? Be serious, Scott, and come right over. We have a little job for you. What? You're joking. You must be joking. I'm on a holiday, Joe, remember? I'm on three-month holiday. Listen to me, Scott. Grant in Hong Kong has been killed. What? Contraband traffic in materials destined for nuclear weapons has been traced to Hong Kong, and we are of the opinion that it's being smuggled into Red China by an international gang. For our national security, the question's of vital importance at this time, since uh, these electronic elements can only be constructed here. We have the names of some of the local thieves involved in extracting material from various stockpiles here in the States, but the gang's headquarters is in Hong Kong, so that's where we want to strike. Grant had uncovered a suspect, Pierre Malo is his alias, and a woman called Blanche Coty. Then he was assassinated. Joe, you've got a problem. We want the organization's boss, the brain. Grant wasn't alone in it. There was a girl who was killed with him. She worked for them as a telegraph operator. He met her there, but she came from right here in San Francisco. Very likely they'll send for a substitute from here. Joe. Joe! Are you trying to tell me that you believe that they're going to come back here to the same place? Come on. I not only believe it, but I know it. Uh -huh. Look there. Each one of these men is a suspected contact of the telegraph operator. Well, it'll be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Oh, here. thanks. Some people get special attention. You can bring me one, too. Right away, Mr. Harris. There are three flights a day from San Francisco to Hong Kong, and my men check on every passenger. Joe? What month were you born, Joe? May. Why? 
You're such an optimist. We have a man there named Norman, but he's too well known in Hong Kong. He can help you with a few leads, but you'll have to carry most of the burden on your own side. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Stroke of luck. His name is Roger Davidson. He's about to be arrested. He's just reserved a Hong Kong flight for a Miss Danny Davis. Why didn't you take a run out to the airport? Do I have any choice? <laughs> It's a pleasure, sir. Pan American Airlines, flight number 374 to Honolulu and Tokyo is now loading. Passengers Miss Davis is reserved a flight to Hong Kong. Gate number four. And here's the ticket. Thank you, sir. Just a minute. We'd like to talk. Come with us. I'd advise you not to make any fuss. That's good. Everything's over. Okay. Good work. Arriving from New York and Chicago, TWA flight number 236. Gate well, number work. seven. Those are one. Have the address? I have it right here. Nine seven one Carrier Street. Thanks a lot. Glad I could help. saying you're a friend of Roger's. You bring me the air ticket for Hong Kong, and then you ask me why I'm going to Hong Kong. Put your hands up! <laughs> Give me that! And get out of here! Get out! That's a horrible-looking little thing. Is that loaded? It is. Want me to prove it? Uh, no, 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 thank you. No, thank you. But uh, you don't really think I came here alone, do you? All right, Jim, don't hit it too hard, huh? Why, it was loaded by Gunny. Ah, let me see now. Being the accomplice of a known enemy agent. Oh, that should be now, let me see now. 20 years. How old are you? I'm 23. 23, yeah? Well, you should be out when you're about 50. But I haven't done anything. I was supposed to go to Hong Kong to work as a secretary and telegraph operator. Roger got me the job. I don't know anything more than that. And now, 27 years in jail. <laughs> well, I tell you, if you are a very good girl and cooperate, I'll see that you don't go in at all. Do you promise? Yeah, I promise. Now tell me, who are you going to meet in Hong Kong, eh? Who? I, I've never been told. Someone at the airport. <gasps> I just remembered something. I was to show this to him. Oh, oh, oh. Real spy stuff, huh? He has the other half? Mm-hmm. Well, you've been a very good girl. You've been such a good girl. I want to introduce you to my family. 
Go ahead, fellas. Put her on ice, huh? Come on, sister, get dressed. But what about your promise? Let that be a lesson to you. Never trust a man. Well, here's your passport all ready for you. Thanks. Did you get all your injections? Uh, smallpox, typhus, cholera, paratyphoid, malaria. I'm a pincushion. <laughs> <laughs> About the girl, you sure you made the right choice? The best one we've got. Besides that, she's our fastest telegraph operator. Yeah, but can't she take care of herself? Oh, you won't have to worry about her, Mike. Oh, you mean she's... You'll see for yourself. Well, I meet her here? I thought it might be better for you to meet somewhere else. Do you know Harry's bar on Fisherman's Wharf? Sure, everybody does. She'll be waiting for you at 6 o'clock. Well, have you got a photograph? What's her name? Oh, Mike, you have no sense of the romantic. A password is what we need. Wait a minute. Oh, Joe. She'll order her martini served. <laughs> With a gooseberry. With a gooseberry? That's right. Joseph. <laughs> Good evening. Martini, please. Right Very away, dry. sir. What time you got? I make it 5 to 6. No, sir. It's only 5.30. 5.30? You sure? I said it by the radio. Oh, boy. Um, you better not make that martini too strong. All right, huh? sir. I won't be sitting here. I'll be lying here when she comes. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, sir? Who's the gorgeous dame, huh? Sorry, sir. Never seen her before. Never seen her before. Hey, beautiful. How about having a little drink with me, huh? No, thank you. I don't want another drink. I'm happy with the one I have. Oh, come on. Don't be so stuck up. What are you drinking, baby? I told you I don't want another drink. Oh, come on, baby. Go away. Come on. Bartender, fill her up. Come on, baby. Don't be that way. A pretty girl like you shouldn't be all alone. Should have company. <laughs> She'll choose her own company, not get lost, huh? It must be boring to be so attractive. Nobody ever leaves you alone. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. You were so kind. Oh, you're very welcome. I'd better get you a drink. Bye, man. Oh, no, please. Uh, let me, huh? Here. Uh... You know, you should wear a sign. Dangerous. Don't <laughs> touch. What would you like? A martini, please. Two martinis. The gooseberry. With the goose. Chinese are so thin, they never get anything to eat. Why are you looking at me? Everything you do, you do daintily. Whether it's throwing a drunk in the air or eating with chopsticks. It's going to be very difficult. What's going to be very difficult? Well, there's a job we have to do together. Oh, I know. I sat up all last night memorizing the girl Davis's background. She's quite a character to impersonate, you know. Prostitution, prison, brought up in an orphanage. And then, of all things, an expert telegrapher. The poor thing. It's a good thing for me they don't know what she looks like. And that's just what I have to worry about. You worry? Well, I like you. I like you very much. And uh, I'm going to worry about you, and I don't like that. You don't have to worry about me. I can take care of myself. Yes, I 
this Pierre Milo that you're going to work for. A very dangerous fellow. Uh, anyway, now to business. You and I, we can't be seen together out there. This is a kind of farewell dinner. I leave tomorrow. When do you leave? Four days' time? That's right. Right. I'll be at the airport, but you won't see me. So I'll be in touch. In touch how? If we can't meet, and I don't know where you live. Like it? No. <laughs> Waiter. Yes, sir. Uh, bill, please. But you haven't finished. Don't you like the food? No, 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 no. Everything's splendid, absolutely wonderful. But my wife's expecting a baby, and we have to get to the hospital. Oh. <laughs> By the way, I almost forgot. There's a present for you from the FBI for being so cooperative. It's wonderful. Thank you. I mean, thank them, but why did they give yeah. me this? I'm going to reserve a table at the hospital. I mean, the restaurant. <laughs> I'll be right back. can call you with this whenever I want to. Only at certain hours. At those hours, and I'm sure to be alone. I'll never call in as we have an appointment. You wouldn't want that breasted to start talking while you were entertaining. Give the show away. Yes, it would kind of cramp my style when I'm entertaining. <laughs> You're right. here, sir. How much is it? Right here, sir. Keep the chair. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Yeah, let me help you. Hmm? Which way is it? That's right. Oh, uh, there we are. Thank you. I feel better now. At least I know I won't be cut off from you. You won't be cut off from me. Oh, one other thing. We have a contact, a man by the name of Norman. But I'll contact him, not you. For the moment, he won't know about you. You know, you're very pretty. Come on, let's have dinner. Thank you. Miss Davis? Yes? Hope you had a good flight and that you'll enjoy Hong Kong. Thank you. Huh. Put the big one in here. The other one in the back. Sorry, but I haven't changed my money yet into Hong Kong dollars. It's all right. I'll take care of it. Yeah. They match. Get in.
Take me to the ferry. Huh? Let's go. Right here, stop. so fantastic. You see, it's the first time I've ever been outside the United States. You know, I've never been away from home before. I've been here so long, I'm fed up with it. Milo will be happy. You're so pretty. <laughs> You're very kind. Where are we going? Across the city. Then 20 miles out to Repulse Bay. What sort of uh, person is Mr. Milo to work for? <laughs> that depends. Okay. I'll tell you when to stop. Have a good time. Thank you. This way. Welcome to Hong Kong. How do you do? I'm Pierre Milo. Ah. And this is my associate, Blanche Coty. How do you do? Good morning. Take oh, the bag. Please sit down. Thank you. What would you like to drink? Oh, whatever you're having, thank you. Ah, good. Now, our friend Roger has very good taste, don't you think? Hmm. Is the cognac all right? Yes. How many words a minute do you tell the type? 114. Oh, that's a lot. Not so much. Well, the last girl only did 100. Miss Davis, I haven't seen Roger in so long. He promised to come here. How's he getting along these days? Roger has been arrested. It was most unfortunate. They picked him up the day I left. I couldn't even kiss him goodbye. It seems he was drunk and doing about 110 miles an hour when he went through a red light. As you can imagine, Roger began to argue about whose fault it was, but they took him away to prison anyway. Well, <laughs> it might have been worse. <laughs> Everything in order? This is your room. I hope you like it. Mei Ping will get you anything you Thank need. Thank you. Well, I have some things to do. It won't take me very long. I unpacked your bags. Thank you. You must be tired after your long journey, Miss Davis. Not really. It was very pleasant, actually. Where's the shower in here? Yes, Miss. Thank you. This antique? Oh, yes. It belonged to my grandmother. You can go now if you want. I won't need you anymore. Thank you. Below the chief. Substitute. 
Institute arrive. Baggage examined, nothing suspicious. It is now 3.45 p.m. Out. she's doing she's looking for a husband she'll shake the gym qua sticks till one falls what happens then I don't know well I'm not looking for a husband I'm looking for a man called uh... Norman yeah you mm -hmm. hello Scott hi Norman well uh, do you have any news for me uh, not very much the police have discovered that Grant and the girl were killed with the same revolver. Oh, Up to now, that seems to be all they found out. I believe that Pierre Milo and Blanche Coty are the ones behind this. Yeah. Has told me about them. Let's move on. Right. Oh, just for curiosity, why did they send you all the way out here? If it was to take care of those two, I could have done that. Oh, no. Now, I'm here to pick up number one. The one who's organizing and coordinating the whole thing. Are you any further on him? Not yet. I put a monitor on Milo's telephone without any results. That boy's too clever. He must have some kind of a secret line. Well, let's see if you and I together can't get somewhere. Mm -hmm. If there's anything I can do for you. Yep. As a matter of fact, you can. I need someone who really knows Hong Kong and speaks Chinese. Uh, there's a young man who works in my office who'd be just right. Shall we go and find him? Yeah, sure. Smokey. Huh? This is Mr. Scott. Oh, hello. Hi. Beginning right now, you're working for Mr. Scott. Why, have you fired me? It wasn't my fault just because that banana truck... Don't worry, I'm not going to fire you. It's just for a week. This is the young man I was telling you about. He speaks Chinese and he knows Hong Kong even better than I do. Just what you're looking for. Uh, let it go. Well, if I need you, I know how to find All right, you. Here. And I'm always in my office. Thanks. Huh? Here, thanks Give me the towel. You have a car? Sure. Around the corner. Well, bring it to my house, huh? I'll bring it back tomorrow. All right. You know my address? Oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. That's all there is. Two, two, two. When a transmission is finished, sign off with two three times. <sighs> all through. Doesn't seem such tough work. Do we transmit everything in code? Mm-hmm, that's right. Oh, they're calling us. Anton Anton, Kama Otra, India Zero Zero, Sahara Atras, Theta Delta, Jelo Alpha. That's the closing signal. Is that the end? Yes, you can go now. Then all I have to do is transmit and to receive the messages that come. Yes, that's right. 
I don't see just why you think this job needs a specialist imported from America. Because whoever took this job would probably be able to transmit as well as I do. Mm. I wasn't able to find someone I could trust here. You understand what I mean. Someone who wouldn't ask too many questions. You supposed, with my background, that I would be the right person. Is that what you mean? Mm. Exactly. And what are my working hours? You'll be on duty in the morning from 9 to 12, and from 3 to 6 in the afternoon. I'll tell you if you're ever needed at some other time. I can do more than that. I'd be happy to decode as well. Everything in good time. First get yourself settled, then we'll see. Well, did you find everything you want? Oh, what a house. This is the life. My room's great, full of antiques, a private bath, and a view of the sea. Huh? But I'll get used to it. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, thanks. All these high-class statues, a little gaudy if you're trying to pass as an insurance agent. Thanks. Well, here's to your ulcer. Is this where you keep the cannon? No. Oh, back there. Hey, how about teaching me some of the uh, <laughs> tricks of the trade, huh? What do you mean? Unarmed combat? How to react to a surprise attack. What, for instance? Well, just suppose you were in trouble and I had to help you. Show me what I should do. All right. Better put your glass down, too. job and I'm gonna find out now. Who sent you, eh? Who sent you? Do you hear? again Wednesday morning. Uh, we can do it before. It'll be a lot better. Wednesday, there'll be the same customs. Man. So what? The captain's a lush. He won't give us any trouble. That's why I bought three bottles of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All I do is sit and take down messages in code. I don't do any decoding yet, but I'm told that if I'm good at my work, well, maybe they'll see. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You be careful now. These are very tough people. I just had a visitor, and not a friendly one. Already? But who could it be? I don't know. I don't know, but they're on to me. So you take great care. I don't think to happen with that pretty face of yours or any other part. Oh, why do you worry about me? But you take care. Promise? I promise. Good night. Sleep tight, huh? Good night to you, Mike. Well, I can't imagine how they knew you were here. Well, what puzzles me is how the hell they found out I was an FBI man. It's the first time I've been in Hong Kong. I can't have known my face. All I can think of is that somebody tipped them off from San Francisco. Who could it be? I don't know. The only two people knew about you were you and Smokey. It could be that I talked in my sleep. Yeah, well, maybe it was your boy. <laughs> hey, Smokey. 
uh, Mr. Scott, do you really think I'd do a thing like no. that? Oh, if I really thought it, I wouldn't have oh. said it. <laughs> well, we'll find out somehow. Have you got any more news for mm -hmm. me? Something interesting. Hmm? Milo has a new guest. Guest? Mm -hmm. A replacement for the secretary who was killed. Just arrived from America. That interest you? Good. Well done. Well done. I'll try and see if I can find out anything about her. I'd like to see Milo's warehouses. There must be somewhere around here. Yes, they're down there. That's where they load the three junks. Their trademark is a dragon. They do the run to Macau in China. We've often stopped them on the high seas with the pretext of a customs inspection, but without any luck. They always carry a cargo of logs. Okay. Smokey and I'll have a look around. Come on. I always find you here? Yes, till about 6 o'clock. Hmm? But you have my home number. Sure. Oh, if you don't find me, try the Suzy Wong Bar. Suzy Wong Bar. It's a good place to pick up news. <laughs> right, I remember that. Thanks. Uh, latch on to the secretary. Must be very dull for you. Always shut up in here. How would you like to have me drive you into Hong Kong this afternoon? Oh, I'd love to. Could you wait just a moment while I go up and change? I'll be right back. Hmm, no hurry. I don't want to. Better keep it. I'll go up to the office and order a copy as a souvenir. Oh, okay, touch. Go ahead. It'll be ready tomorrow. Let's go, come on. Wait a minute. Do you have a telephone? Here. Look at that huh? photograph. Do you know who those two people are? Uh -uh. That's Grant and Linda. Two people who were killed. Now, we just have to find out who that is. I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the docks and see if you can find anyone who can recognize this man, right? Okay. Wait a minute. I'll see you at the Suzy Wong Bar at 4 o'clock. Okay, Chief. Norman? Norman? Norman, something very interesting has just turned up. Is it possible for you to meet me at the Suzy Wong Bar at 4 o'clock? I'll see you there, to date. Right. Hi. Ah, there you are. What do you have? Oh, gin and tonic. Huh? Gin and tonic. Well, what's the big news? Well, let's wait for smoke. Found a photo. Very interesting. Maybe there's somebody you might recognize. Hmm? We'll wait for Smokey. Thank you. This morning we mentioned Milo and the recent arrival of a new secretary. They're sitting together at that table, just behind you. Would you like another one? No, thank you. I'm ready to go now. All right. Pleasure checking on her. Oh, you're in. She gave you a big smile. <laughs> you're kidding. Kidding. Hi. Uh -huh. Here he is. Did you find him? Uh -huh. I found a fisherman who says he knows the guy. He's waiting for us. Go on. Let me see. Look. There's the man. Have you ever seen him before? No. Never. Mm. Oh, well. Just as soon as they go out, follow them. Okay, Smokey. Let's go look for your friend. The port can be dangerous. Be careful. No way, Norman. I have Smokey to look after me. He has me. Good night. 
就是看那中国人讲话，杀掉他。欢迎欢迎欢迎欢迎！你想见嗰人喺嗰头嚟啊？我带你去啊！你想我船我撑你去，好唔好啊？好唔好啊？我带你去，好，多谢多谢多谢。欢迎欢迎，小心啲坐啊吓，坐喺度啦，好舒服噶，我哋一定去到嗰度噶啦。好，要开啦。Please. I no understand. You tell me English. I understand. Please. You speak Chinese, huh? Well, the Chinese don't understand. Ma. Tell me. I'm a friend of this man, and I'm trying to find out why he's been killed. You know him? Yes, I know. You worked for him, huh? Yes, here. He used my boat to take him to see junk. Yes, many times. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any special kind of junk? Where? Junk, he always want to see... Uh... Go on, tell me where it is. Watch out! <laughs> I don't understand. Last. Missed him three times. <sighs> well, our friend is gone. Huh? So tell me. What were you going to tell me? Sala. Please, sir, no talk. I family fisherman. No talk, please. Thank you. Please, sir. All right. Who are those men? I don't know. I've never seen them before in my life. I wonder who they are. Well, let's find out. What are you doing? 
doing here? This is private property. Madam, we represent the Mutual Life Insurance Company of Chicago and Kowloon, and we'd like to interest you in some very special policies. Mm-hmm. How dare you force your way into my house? You should have telephoned first and asked for an appointment, and I would have informed you immediately that I'm not interested in any life insurance. Pierre! What's going on? These gentlemen seem to have strayed into our garden. A cozy little place. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Please show them the way out. My car. Mutual life of Kowloon. Not interested. Why didn't you telephone and make an appointment? And make an appointment? But this is so much more personal, don't you think? Actually, I'm here to investigate the death of James Mark Grant. My company had a very heavy life insurance on him. What's that got to do with us? We don't even know him. He's a very great friend of your secretary, Linda Wells. Ah, really? Mm-hmm. Who was also killed. Or hadn't you heard? Yes. Naturally, we heard about it. But at the time, we didn't connect it with the death of Grant. But tell me, you say he was a friend of Linda Wells. Then you had heard of Grant's death. Of course not. You misunderstood. He means he first heard of this man's death when you told us about it. Yes. Oh, I'm not a very good host, huh? May Ping, bring us something to drink. Yes, sir. May I present Mr. Scott, my new secretary, Miss Danny Davis. How do you do? Hello. I have a very bad memory. What was your name? Davis. Danny Davis. Danny Davis, of course. Uh, this is my assistant, um, uh, Smokey. How Hello. do you do? Well, I'll tell you. If you could give me all the details about Linda Wells, a passport number, social security, references, diplomas, anything that might help. You see, if I can prove that Grant's death was a suicide, it would save my company half a million dollars. Now, wait. It does seem odd they were both killed with the same gun. The gun that was found beside Grant's body. I'm amazed. You think there's some relation between... I'm them? sure there is. Well, offhand, I don't know what to say. I tell you what. Come to my office one of these days. Better telephone first to make sure you find yeah, me in. It'll be very helpful. It's nothing. <laughs> I'll call you. This is Milo. We just had a visit from a so-called insurance agent, but his story sounds a little fishy to me. Shall I check up on him? Don't bother. I know all about it. Scott is an FBI agent. I've already tried to eliminate him, but he's more clever than Grant was. Maybe you'll have better luck. Get rid of him. Okay, Chief. I'll take care of him. He won't get in our hair anymore. I was right. He's no insurance salesman. He's an FBI agent. The boss already knew all about him. He must have good contacts. Pierre! Don't get excited, Blanche. She's one of us now, aren't you? Oh, I hope so. You can trust me. I'll settle his future. How's it coming? It's all finished, sir. Not a trace. Good job. Thank you, sir. We'll be loading the cargo shortly. Yes, sir. Your turn. Wait a minute. Mike. Hello, sweetie. How's my favorite girl? Mike, I have some bad news for you. They know who you are. Milo suspected right away that you weren't an insurance agent. He phoned somebody, and then after the call, he came back and told Blanche you were with the FBI, and that he was going to take care of you. Now, I'm going to call Milo and make an appointment to see him. If I learn anything, I'll get in touch with you. When is it safe to call? Between 7 and 8. Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Milo, please. Scott speaking. Just a minute. Yeah. Yes? Ah, 
Mike Scott here. Oh, hello, Scott. How are you? You were kind enough to say that if I called, you would meet me out at your office. Did you make it this evening at 7.30? Fine. 7.30? 7.30 in my office. Do you know where it is? Yes, I think I know how to get there. Oh, no, you better tell me the road. It's here in my warehouse. Take the Kowloon Pick Road. Wait, just a moment, please. Do you know the Kowloon mm -hmm. Pick Road? Yeah, sure I do. Yeah. It's the shortest route. All right. Yep. I'll be expecting you. Right. 7.30. Right you are. Hmm. Oh, we got three hours. All right. Oh, why don't you take a peek at Milo's Wharf? Or let's look around. See if you can find out something. Okay. Don't forget, I'll meet you at 7 o'clock outside the same bar, right? I've got it, Chief. What do you do in the meantime? Hmm? Well, I'm going to sleep. I'm relying on you now. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You can depend on me. time to see anything. What do you mean, nothing? What happened? They tried to flatten me with a crate they dropped from the loading crane. When I jumped aside, I landed in the drink. Mei Ping, that Chinese girl from Ilo's villa, must be behind it. I saw her there in the wharf. Mei Ping. Something's funny. We're up in the hills. Isn't this warehouse down at the waterfront? Don't worry. First we go up, then we go down. I know my Hong Kong. <laughs> okay. Okay, Perita. Uh -huh. Good boy. Thanks. Bad news, Blanche. 
That was Perita. Mike Scott, the insurance agent who came here, was just killed in a motor accident. Uh, Pierre, we're not involved, are we? Of course not. Better close the windows. It's beginning to get damp. I'm going in. You coming? you was coming here. You could have called me. Oh, I called you three times. You didn't reply. I took the bracelet off as soon as I heard you were dead. Oh, Mike. I thought I'd never hear from you again, so I turned it off. I thought I'd lost you. You haven't lost me. You'll never lose me. Sit down. Why, darling? Because I can't think when you're near me, and I have to think. Now? You have to think now? Oh, <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. I've still no idea who the number one is. I don't know how they're moving the stuff. Would it help if I found the code? What? Would it help? Would it be the answer to everything? Why do you ask? Uh, every day they decode the messages I bring up to them. I'm not quite sure whether I can do it, but if I could find out where the code book is, I could copy it and do my own decoding first. Yeah. But promise me this. Yeah? That you will be at your place all tomorrow afternoon. I will be in touch with you. Will you promise all afternoon? Okay. I promise I'll be there. But you, take great care. Huh? Don't worry. Well, I'd better be going. Hmm? You'd better be going. Mm. Hmm. Oh, the hell with smoking. Mm. I don't forget, see? You promised to play it safe. All right. No heroics. Yeah? Take care of it right away. Yes, sir. The cargo will sleep for China tomorrow. Uh,
Mike. Yep, I'm here. We've just now been sent a message in code, which I'm about to bring to Milo. I'll plant my bracelet. Stand by. I'll call you as soon as I can. Right. Okay. Goodbye. I have an urgent message that came just now. Leave it on the desk, please. All right. I just received a message that was signaled as urgent, so I informed Mr. Milo, and he told me to put it on his desk. Thank you, Miss Davis. You're welcome. Pierre! Coming. Let me see it. Get the code book. Hmm. It's gone. I very carefully hid it myself. It must be that Davis. I'm sure she found it. No, I thought it was a good idea to change place. It's in the bookcase, second shelf down, third volume from the left, inside the box. Then why didn't you tell me? You don't have to be so mysterious. Miss Davis dropped her bracelet. I better take it up to her. disturbing you. I found your bracelet lying on the rug, so I thought I'd oh, better... I must have the catch repaired. Thank you very pleasure. much. Mike, what did you hear? Now, let me think. Third book from the left, second shelf down. Look inside, and there it is with a black case covering it. Okay, I've got it clear. I'll try to get it tonight. Look, you go over to Milo's villa. Now, if you notice anything suspicious, anything at all, you call me. Don't wait. Call immediately, right? Yeah, but, but I understand. But why don't you do it? Because I, I can't, just... stupid. Otherwise, I would. I've got to be down at the wharf. Now, someplace, I'm sure there's bound to be some clue that will give me the real proof of how they operate. Yeah. All right, go on. Get going. Go on. Uh, sure, sure. I'm going. Shall we lob the special locks first? Of course. Yes, sir. Lots 
他，围拢，不要放他，哎，哎，抓住，抓住，别，大。Give up. You're still on the loose. You've done all you can, but we do our work a lot better. Too bad you didn't realize it. You must have been a beautiful child. Your mother must have loved you. Did you know her? What are you doing here? Give me those books. If you care to know what I was after, I couldn't sleep, so I was looking for a book to read. Ah, yes? Interesting literature you have there. The code book. Smart. And now you'll pretend it's all a big mistake. I don't know what you're talking about. Ha-ha. <laughs> Pierre. Pierre! I've got a big surprise for you. Uh. Uh. Right? <clears throat> now you will tell me what you have to say. These cigarettes are very good. Want one? Here. <gasps> Still silent. Oh, well. Chang. I'll make her talk. Well, don't worry about being polite. I want miss. Don't touch me. Don't touch me with your filthy hands. <clears throat> Planning a little trip all by yourself. That's interesting. I thought you were downstairs. Has she talked yet? Chang's refreshing her memory. I'm interested in your travel plans. Scott's still alive. Perita says he caught him. I want to be sure about it. I'll be at Kowloon waiting for you. We'll meet there. Don't bother lying to me. Have a good trip. The chief will be glad to hear you're enjoying yourself. I'm sick of working for someone who has no name. Chief? What is it? <laughs> Just guess. Pierre's made off with the kitty. And that Davis dame tried to steal the code book. Thanks, Blanche. I'll take care of Pierre. And I'll have Perita bring you and the girl down to the wharf. You'll go to Macau with me. The junks are ready to sail. Mr. Smoke, what's happened to you? Mr. Smoke, wake up! Are you hurt? No. I'll help you to the house. No, I must go to the police station. I, I will go with you. They've oh. left me here all alone. I heard that Blanche caught up somebody. He told her to bring the girl aboard one of the junks. I will get out of the car. 
One of the junks. Oh, that means they're about to sail. Oh, I'd better get a hold of Scott. being followed. You see, you bring bad luck to me every time I run into you. Well, it won't be for much longer. Here they come. some coolies to give us a hand with Sleeping Beauty. What for? I think she's taking a nap. <laughs> you don't say. I managed to escape, but it's... It's Carol. Carol? Who's she? Oh, I didn't tell you that. She's Milo's new secretary. I can tell you now. She's a plan. She's working with us. Working with us? Why didn't you tell me about I can't explain it? everything now. But the point is, they've got her, and they know who she is. Smokey, who was hiding outside, saw them catch her when she was looking for the code book. And Mei Ping, that's this Chinese girl who was working for them, told me she heard them say they were taking her on one of Milo's junks and taking off a God knows where. Now, we've got to catch them. If we don't, they'll kill her. They haven't done so already. Let me think. Okay, I'm with you, Mike. Okay. Have you got a gun? Oh. I'll get you one. Here, catch. Just checking. Come on, let's go. There they are. We'll overtake them in a minute. You sure that's the right junk? I know my own junk. You? You're the boss. I never believe this in Washington. What makes you think you're ever going to see Washington again? Now turn. We'll head back to the wharf. No, I prefer to go to the junk. Just turn around. We're going to the wharf. I'm going to get my girl. Anyway, you wouldn't kill a man in cold blood, would you? Turn towards the wharf or I'll shoot. Get stuck. But this one is loaded. Remember, we both checked it. Now, go on, take the wheel. Now, no funny business. You head straight for the junk. If anything's happened to Carol, God help you. I tell you, God help you. I offer my congratulations. You must be less stupid than most of us thought. Yeah. Come, get up. Give me back the helm. Here's your gun. Take it. But you've got to give your boys the impression you've got me covered. Don't forget I shoot just as well from my pocket. All right, go aboard and tell the captain to turn the boat around and head back.
Turn back to Hong Kong. Let's go, huh? Where are the women? Come on. You won't need that anymore. Right? Get it. So you're the chief. At least I know who it is now. Why, good evening, Blanche. Perhaps you'll wish you bought some insurance from me. Get up. Go on. There's nothing wrong with her. The effect will soon wear off. If you've done anything to harm her, you're going to wish you were never born. Just a simple injection, that's all. Nothing to worry about. Interesting situation. He shoots me, I shoot you. It's the girl he'll shoot, if you don't hand that pistol to me. Oh, look at the cat left mm. behind. <coughs> Stop! Hold it. They may both be useful to us as hostages. Have the helmsman head for Macau. Okay. But remember, he's mine. Keep them covered. I'll be right back. May I see if she's been hurt? Okay. No tricks. Or my finger might slip and she'll get a bullet in the face. This tender love scene has come to an end. Now get your hands up. <gasps> now you just keep quiet, understand? Or I'll shoot you in the face, baby. Carol. You all right? You stay here, huh? Come on. Lie back where you can see you. Bloody monotonous keep on changing this gun, but this time I'll hold it. Come on, baby. Let's go. Yes. You okay? Excuse me. Do you mind turning around for a moment, old fellow? Go first, huh? Hello, cute face. Turn the boat around. Mike! Come closer. 
If you want the girl back while her face is still pretty. I'll come closer. I'm on arm. Slow down. Sure I will. Jump overboard. Sure. Time. I warned you if I ever. I'm ready. You what are you waiting for? Scott! 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 Let me out! I set a time bomb on board! It's due to go off! I think somebody ought to be steering the boat. Well, what? Oh, my life, I got it. Come on. We'll be killed, do you hear? I've set off the time fuse! Scott! It'll go off any minute now, believe me! Hands up. I've seen through your plan. So that's what you were doing outside. And then you were going to leave us, huh? Kill me and the others, the way you killed Pierre. Because you have no more use for us. I'll kill you. I'll show you who's afraid. <laughs> I'll show you who's afraid. <laughs> Get going. 